16th of April, 126 p.m., Windy Banks Palm Burgery. By the way, my name is Calvin, also known as Romer, and this is The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. This is my first episode of The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Um, it feels weird always coming back to this kind of section of the game, or this area in the game, uh, because this has become such a central point. Somewhere I thought that was going to be kind of like just some kind of comedy bit, or like kind of lead to what we needed to get, which was the disc, but this is the scene of the crime. It's beautiful, but we now we know there's something a lot sinister going on here as well. Here we are at the scene of the crime. So Gregson. Now to thrust these uh oh so now to thrust these representation papers in Gregson's face to see what he makes of it. So we are going to be representing Gina. I like Gregson a lot. Uh hello, Inspector. Do you have a minute, please? What is it now? You should go home and get some rest. Here you are, Gregsy. Here are the representation papers. We're doing it. Your ladyship! How? I don't believe it. How the devil did you get the stubborn little ragabash to sign there? I'll salute you. That is good work, Ace. I, I really like Gregson as a character. I can see him very busy here as well. How about some tea? It's a special blend designed to relieve fatigue. Lovely. Well, let's see now. Yes, yes. Ah, if you were tired at all, you'd finish the fiddle, your ladyship. Would it be alright if we investigate the scene of the crime then? Do as you please. You know what happened to that door behind the counter. Yes, the storeroom. That's where I discovered Mr. Windybank and Gina. What? Well, I'll be getting back to business then. We investigate the storeroom as well, Inspector? If I'm perfectly honest, we need to wrap this up before long. Can't afford to spend too much time on it. But there are so many articles to go through. It's taken forever, even with the lads working around the clock. Which is a problem, because there's another case the yard needs to investigate urgently. That means what the Lord Stronger meant by far more serious matters before. I also like, again, I like to like make these uh, episodes kind of communal and community-based, uh, as always, with every single series. Uh, people kind of like, you know, some people weren't, weren't, you know, kind of fighting against it, but kind of like, you know, giving their own opinion on what they felt about the pacing of the game. And they felt like, you know, they loved kind of like how you get to see kind of the slice of life stuff. And I agree. I think that stuff is really cool. So I will definitely concede on that. Like, I think you definitely need those type of things in video games as well. Um, yeah, but I definitely like liked hearing all your opinions on it, guys, uh, because... You know, we're not always going to agree on video games. It doesn't happen like that. It doesn't work like that. But literally every single person has been very polite about it. Like, um, sometimes you can kind of be worried, like, oh, is someone going to, like, not like my opinion on this or whatever? Uh, but the thing is, like, you guys have always made me feel, uh, especially, like, the great people in the comments, uh, have always made me feel very safe with giving my opinion. I think that's why uh, I was kind of so strong with it last episode. I really like it. Uh, I really like this game. But it's just, I guess, just my opinion on the pacing was a bit different to you guys, which is fine as well. So what I'm saying is, don't go to my feet, sunshine. Come then. Let us not waste any time. Cesaro, you always... Oh, Cesaro's going home, ain't she? So we get to, like, examine this whole place now. Which is interesting enough. We're probably going to go through that door last. So, oh, this is actually, like, a cool little jacket here you got going on here. You got no arms and stuff? So that's fair enough, you know? My friend had, uh, had that as well. Three golden balls. That's what? That sign shows a pawn sh uh, shop is a pawnbrokery. A bit like your armband shows your defense lawyer. And what's the significance of the three golden balls? Does it have some special meaning? I expect Hurley would like to uh, answer that question when he's back from the hospital. You mean you don't know? I mean, that's fair enough. So we, first of all, we have to look at this bloody picture here. Look here. A bullet hole. And I can see the bullet is still lodged in the wall. Presumably Mr. Winniebanks wasn't pra practicing with his revolver in his spare time. Mr. Shun likes to practice in his drawing room whenever he can. He's very patriotic like that. It's all uh, there in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, you know? Isn't that right, Iris? Ah, uh, did I watch something like that? Polly and Jess, perhaps. And Jess? Well, he doesn't do it often. It's quite a dangerous pastime. 
he, he doesn't do it often? He shouldn't even do it once. <laughs> Forget that, Arono. Let's examine this bullet. So we can examine the bullet, which is going to be nice. Look at this close-up. The drawings in this game, the art in this game is absolutely fantastic. Uh, what's that around the bullet hole? Is it blood? Hmm. A suspicious red stain on the calendar. Aha! I'm well we able to help with that. Huh? There's nothing like the sort of blood to get the blood pumping, is that right now? Uh, I have a feeling I'm not as bloody minded as you, Iris. I'm afraid the sight of blood makes my blood run cold. There you have it, you see? When it comes to blood, we're all different types. Yes, what a scientific observation. So you need this. Oh no, what is this scary looking thing? I actually haven't come up with a name for it yet. But as soon as you see it in action, you understand what it does. Watch. So this is the thing that shows all like the the fingerprints, wasn't it? Or was that a different thing? Wait, what? Why? The call of the blood saint has changed. Why? Yeah, does it make sense now? Yes, I think I'm starting to understand. Good. It works on the principle that the different people have different types of blood, you see. No way. No freaking way. How? How wonderful. The camera fire combines with the blood and makes it change color. So you can identify whose blood it is that you're looking at. In a flash. Oh, what a fabulous invention, Iris. It's pretty crazy. Isn't it? Isn't it? I bet you anyone would uh, say it's bleeding great. So whose blood are we looking at then? Well, all the chemical does is turn a blood different color, so... Just find someone whose blood turns the same color and you know who it belongs to. In a flash. So we have to, like, shoot someone with this as they're, like, bleeding? It's more like two flashes, really, isn't it? One flash or two, this could very well turn out to be a very valuable clue. So we must make a note in the court record. The blood sample. The sample put analyzed with a special chemical indicator developed by Mr. Sholmes. Different people's blood turns different colors. Let's keep testing and adding the results of any other blood analysis to the portfolio. As long as I have a region left, sure. Okay, cool. So we uh, examined that. That's one of the big things. We kind of examined a lot of things here. So I'm going to try and examine, like, maybe stuff that we didn't, that we kind of catches our eye about this thing. Uh, maybe, look, let's just examine everything. These shelves are where the pawnbroker put articles that have been forfeited on display for customers to buy. Yes, it's really strange uh, miscellaneous, isn't it? I mean, who would buy this horse statue, for example? Well, sometimes you can find some real treasures among all the junk, you know? Are you alright, Bruno? Oh, it's just, well, it looks like a collection of useless junk as a whole, but when you pick out the individual things, you can't tell wishing you owned them. Even that horse statue. That's exactly how the pawnbroker works. They're very clever. Do we have to talk to this boy as well? The police are scouring every inch of this place by the look of it. It's Chuck T from the yard. I to examine every article in the shop and every ledger and book of accounts. Every article, but but that's a ridiculous, a ridiculous amount of work, surely. We've been all at it ever since the shop was declared the crime scene in the early hours. We're shifting through it all in the shifts at least, but still. We'll be working through the night, that's for sure. And even then, we'll barely have scratched the surface. A crime in the pawnbrokers. It must be every policeman's worst nightmare. It's every cop's worst nightmare, you know, crime in the pawnbrokers. This officer's been staring intently at the wall since before we came in here. Oh, sorry. There's a major clue, just here. Really? Then we must tell Gregsy at once. As soon as I'm bored, that'll be it. I'll be stuck here longer. Stuck here? What do you mean? I've been one. I've been home in two days already. I need another constable to relieve me and take over my shift. Huh. They really have a tough time, the British police. Doesn't stop us investigating, though, does it? No, I suppose not. I'm very sure the calendar was appearing at. So we talked to him as well. I mean, I feel like we don't need to look at this, but we might as well anyway. This is that strange contraction that takes pictures of things that are right in front of your eyes. It makes you think. When Mr. Sholmes gleefully showed us it was yesterday, we were blissfully unaware of anything that was about to happen. Very true. Very true. Here's the thing that started it all. That's a music box. Do you think they, uh, they had them where you're from, Runo? I don't have anything where I'm from. I'm from a place beyond the world. Japan! That's what- that's been the discourse lately, by the way, about J Japan and how, like, people think that it's just, like, a no-nothing- it's, like, a nothing place. Yes, but I've never seen one as large as this in Japan. 
Oh well, this will be a treat. Shall we have a listen? This is a story about a kingdom. A kingdom far away. The legend that is only known through time and space. Paper Mario Ace Attorney Chronicles. What do you think? Isn't it pretty sound? It's a beautiful sound, yes, but it's a little hard to enjoy when all the policemen in this room are giving you the fierce looks. Yeah, let them look. What are you gonna do? Arrest the sound? Bo -wo -wo -ah. Never mind, if anyone sent them saying anything, I'll tell the Gregsy to have a word. Iris Wilson, Superintendent of Scotland Yard. So that was kind of cool. That was kind of a cool moment. But we guess we have to explore here as well. There's like stuff on the ground here. I don't know what that is though. Oh, I guess we're just doing the whole table. Oh, there's the cat. The cat. There's the article ledger here. Mr. Windybag's notes. Hmm. What's this? It looks like though someone has left a little photographic print behind. It's, oh uh, yeah, it's the cat. It's Gina's cat. There's some writing. Is there? Oh, show us, Susie. Show us. 15th February, 10.30 p.m. Article deposited. One gentleman's overcoat. Oh, this was, yeah, this is the thing. Loan amount paid, one pound. Redemption deadline, 15th of April, 10.30 p.m. A gentleman's overcoat pawned for a pound? Clearly, it was a very fine coat. In fact, I think... Yes, this must be a ticket for the overcoat that Ginny redeemed yesterday. And is still wearing, which belonged to Mr. McGilded. Belonged to Gina now. Finders, keepers, losers, dead. I would never have expected the redemption ticket to be hadn't written on the back of a photograph, though. It seems Mr. Windbag just used whatever piece of paper he happened to have at hand. Yeah, it's very strange, and that's the cat. But this photograph of a cat... It looks... very familiar, doesn't it? I'm sure I've seen this exact same picture somewhere else recently. Oh, yes, you're right! Very recently. It's the same one that Ginny gave us earlier. Of course, I was forgetting that since she gave us that, that print. Well, what are you waiting for then, Mr. Naruto? Get it out! Alright, alright. Let the cogs turn. They're exactly the same. Well, the one on the counter was used as a redemption ticket. Perhaps the other photograph that Gina gave us has something around the back too. Did we not check that? I've got it. These two photographs hide an amazing secret. A secret? What does she mean? You must tell us, Iris, at once. Do you realize, really, really, really want to know? Do I really, really want to know? I do. Yes, we need to tell us all that you know about this pair of photographs. Please, that's the whole point. Tell us! Do I have to click into it? Sorry, it's about these two photographic prints. The one we found here on Mr. Winterbank's counter, and the one that Gina gave us before. Was, is, it, what is this amazing secret you mentioned that's hidden between these two identical pr uh, prints? Actually, that's not quite right. Sorry? If you look carefully, the two prints aren't the same, not exactly. What is it? What's different? They're not? Have no look at them now. Let's take a look. Let's, take, let's try and figure this out. Hmm. hmm. The cat is looking t a different way. No, is 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 it? No. The snowman is more cut off in the picture in the, in on the right for sure. Yeah, it's more zoomed in. The one on on the right is more zoomed in. Can you see that they're just slightly different from each other? I think so. Very subtle, though. But what's the reason for the subtle difference between the two prints? Oh, well, it's because they're set, you see. No, I don't. This pair of photographs... ...is meant to be used in stereoscope. Everyone in London is raving about them at the moment. A oh, stereoscope? What if it feels like we've heard that before? Yeah, we looked through that thing right there in the box. Yeah, that's how Mr. Shom showed us yesterday. You see? There it is, just over there. 
Ah uh, yes, of course, that magical machine that makes pictures look almost real enough to touch. Heh, <laughs> well actually... It's quite possible to see the same depth in the, depth in the pictures, even without one of those uh, contraptions. What, really? Do you know how a pair of flat photographic prints can appear to have any dead in the first place? No, I have no idea. Oh, wonderful. Then I'll be able to tell you. She's over the moon. Bless her. Should we let her explain, though? We really need to carry an investigation scene. Oh, should we? I, for one, simply have to know. How stereoscopic prints work. I guess we'll find out. Have you ever considered, Bruno? How I see death in the world around us, depth in the world around us. Well, I just opened them and it works. But the reason it works is because we have two eyes. Two eyes, shocking. If you try, try closing just one at a time, I think I'll see you straight away. What you see with your left eye, and what you see with your right eye. I ever so slightly different. You get a different view with each eye. Yes, the position obviously needs to be sh uh, to shift slightly. Exactly. And in your head, your brain uses that to shift to estimate depth as it merges the two views into one. That's how we can sense depth in everything we see. Ha! Huh. My brain is really amazing, isn't it? It does so much without telling me. That's that's it. That's true. That's true. We'll never, like, I'll never fully understand, understand the human brain. No one ever will. We, unless you can, like, actually, like, dissect it and stuff and stuff like that, or, like, you know, examine it. No one can do, like, dissections either. The day we can cut open humans is going to be a big day. You're just making all the surgeons watching angry. I know you're a surgeon. Calm down. I have, like, it's so funny. My audience is, like, is, like, you know, 10% trans people. 50% gay people, and then 40% surgeons. <laughs> That's it. That's the audience. <laughs> I think I see. So the pair of photographs consists of a left eye view and a right eye view. Is that right? Oh, well done, Susie. You're so quick. So if you can persuade your brain to merge the two pictures together in your head... You'll be able to see the depth in these pictures? Yep. Yeah. Rona, you're beginning to understand. And stereoscopes function acts as your brain and allow you to do just that. Do I do just that? Yes, but as long as you have two images, two eyes, and one brain, you can actually do it yourself without needing a stereoscope at all. You can? Really? How to view stereoscopic prints. Is this going to be relevant, though? Let's try. Let's see if you can see, view this rare uh, pair of prints without the help of a stereoscope. Oh, yes. I'm dying to have a go. Susana really loves this kind of thing. You need to be able to cross your eyes. That's the main thing. Can you both do that? Yeah, I can. Watch. I, I think I can. Watch me. See if you can copy. <laughs> Adorable. Make your eyes do this. Suzato, if you can do it, come on, let's go. Are you ready, Mr. Nar Naruto? <laughs> Look away. There, how's that? Uh, wonderful, now it's your turn, Runo. The trick is to concentrate on looking at the bridge of the nose with both eyes at the same time. Yeah, I can do that. Not exactly an easy task when two people are staring at you cross-eyed. All right, that's enough practice. Now let's try to look at the prints. Start by staring at one of the prints and slowly crossing your eyes. Okay. You should see a two other Apple images like this. You try it now, Runo. I'm just going to have to give it a try, I suppose. Did the prince print the two images for you? No, 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 did not. Sorry. Is to put the pair of prints side by side like this, and then try crossing your eyes again. The prints should slowly merge together. That's not happening for me, Iris. Iris, that's not happening for me. They form a new single image in the center. Oh yes, Mr. Naruto works. I can see the middle now. 
It looks so real. I could look at it all day. Please don't. I wouldn't advise it. Your eyes might start to hurt. Start. Start to hurt. Yo, Tenruna, how about I don't? How about I don't? I'm trying to investigate a murder. Okay, I'll try it. I'll try it. Okay, I'll try it. No, it didn't work. Keep just in the position you always until two women just overlap exactly in the middle. Like this, is it? There, you imagine. That's now you see how stereoscopic images work. Yeah, like, and again, I understand, like, I'm not gonna go into a whole thing of, like, oh, why is this relevant? Because, look, it's there. This is how the game is. We might as well just keep going, you know what I mean? Um, regardless. Well, I don't know who discovered it, but it really is quite extraordinary. So what do you think of these stereoscopic prints, then, Runo? They're certainly amazing, but it isn't easy to get the knack of viewing them properly. No, some people find it easier than others. But that's why contraptions like this exist, for people who find it tricky. Oh, I recognize that. We saw one over there yesterday, didn't we? If I remember correctly, you press this little knob here. Then set the pair of photographs in the stand to the back end. It's still amazing, even though I know roughly how it works now. Well, London seems to agree with you. Stereoscopes are very popular at the moment. You can find one of these folding contraptions in lots of households in the capital currently. But these little machines are so affordable. Surely there's need to go around staring cross-eyed at pictures like you ate them. But it's much more satisfying to be able to see the effect with your own eyes. Well, I think so in any case. Stereoscopic pictures, I'd never even heard of them until yesterday. We've certainly learned a lot about them, but I wonder if it's knowledge that'll, uh, that I'll actually ever need. The second white cat photograph has been entered into the court record. Which reminds me. The back of this photograph is used to write out the pawnbroker's ticket that Gina brought in yesterday. And the other photograph came from the pocket of McGilda's overco overcoat. We need to examine everything thoroughly, don't forget. Okay. Is that enough conversing? Are we, are we done conversing? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's very nice talking to you, uh, Irish. Thank you. That ledger that, oh, that's open on the counter really is enormous, isn't it? It must be an awful lot of work to keep track of all these hundreds of items in the pawn. It's too much to think about. Better to sell it and have a clear head if you ask me. But clearly Mr. Winniebank was very careful when it came to the articles in his care. Yes, we should go to the door. This is where we need to go. Behind that door. It's a storeroom, isn't it? Yes, and that's where I saw the dreadful scene last night. Through the little window in the door. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure I am. Mr. Windybank, face down on the floor. With Gina beside him. As the accused legal representative, you have the right to examine the scene, Mr. Naruto. We must make a thorough investigation. Yes, of course. And we will. Behind that door, that's the real scene of the crime. Don't worry. If there are clues in there, I'll find them. I mean, are we going in there now? Do we have to move to the storeroom? Is that what we have to do? We do. Just like that. I thought we'd have to like walk in. Oh, this is an interesting room as well. It's actually very uh, cozy. Uh, cozy is another word for dark and desolate and destructive. And gone. Poor Iris. She, she's clammed up completely.
Iris is bound to find this difficult. After all, Mr. Winterwank's life was taken in this very room only last night. What was- what was- wait, what was that? What was that? That music stopped as well. Whoa, it now, sunshine? You took one look at me and tried to run away. You think it's got your respect would run away from some jumped up little defense lawyer, do you? I just will. I've never seen a ladyship looking like that before, is the thing. I didn't know what to say to her. So you weren't running away from me. You are running away from the ten-year-old. I'm afraid it's all a little much for young Iris. Some gentle reassurance might go a long way, perhaps, Inspector. Um, <clears throat> don't, uh, don't trouble yourself on Julie, your ladyship. I mean, you should not dead, are you? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't think that went very well. He's like kind of creepy sometimes, Gregson. Why? Look, I'm in the middle of an investigation here, so I told you not to get on my feet. And we have investigating to do ourselves. Yes. I'd like to hear more of what this so the social inept inspector has to say. Love the little depths they're adding to his character here as well. Oh, Hurley. And inquire into how Mr. Sholm's operation is going. Converse? Yeah, converse. Let's go. The scene of the crime. So, Inspector, what do you make of the crime scene here? Pshaw! <laughs> you got eyes, haven't you? Use them! It is what it looks like. Nothing more, nothing less. Iris, could you lend me a hand? So, Gregsy, what do you make of the crime scene here? Okay, it's, it gets a bit weird, you know, dude, like that you're, like, you know, this 10 year old is what's gonna get around you. I suppose that happens sometimes with dads, though, as well, doesn't it? Oh, yes, your lady, Joe, but I'll do what I will be explained. Last night, at a shortly after an hour one, of one o'clock in the morning, Scotland Yard police attended the scene. The one and only dog to the store room was found locked from the inside. So it was locked from the inside. The lock appears to be broken now, though. Was that the police officer's doing? Quite right, ma'am, quite right. We took the liberty of smashing the door in as humbly as possible. Oh. As you can see, the victim was discovered prostrate on the floor. Um, that's why. And next to the aforementioned body, we discovered the vile gutter, uh, vile gutter child. Are you talking about Ginny? She's my friend, you know, Inspector? Mr. Stride, the hapless girl, was curled up on the floor, dead to the world. She's still alive, you know. Yes, when I saw her, she appeared to be unconscious. And I'm afraid to say, she had the gun that was used in her hand. No. No, yes, yeah, she didn't. I disagree. Presumably, it's the gun that's still down there on the floor now. We should use it. On Gregson. For the crack. For the fun. In her pocket, we found the key to the door as well. What? The key to the storeroom? Uh, you say the storeroom have been locked from the inside, Inspector? Correct. All which leaves a ladyship friend in something of a sticky situation, I'm afraid. Obviously, my personal opinion is that all sorts of misunderstanding. Of course it is, Inspector. Of course it is. I tend to agree. Guys, we're going to end the video here. Thank you so much for watching this episode, and thank you so much for supporting the series. I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye. This is not a placeholder outro.